How are you guys doing today? All right, Happy New Year to everybody. Happy New Year to all of our campuses, and it's great to have you in the house. So let's have a uh, prayer before we begin. Father, you give me the words to say, and I pray that we would apply these words to every aspect of our lives and being. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. A couple of days ago, I sat down at a massive buffet, and this buffet had everything you could think of. It had a station where you could eat shrimp, crab claws, and oysters on the half shell. It had another station that had all the meats. It had another station with the vegetables. It had an omelet station. Wherever you turn, there was food, food, and more food. I love to eat. And to be frank with you, to be honest with you, I didn't know where to begin. I was like, do I start there or maybe here? I don't want to waste you know, an, an empty stomach on salad. I want the real deal. Maybe you've been like that before. Maybe you've experienced a buffet like that before. Well, today, as I kick this series off on details, on manners, etiquette, respect, and honor, I sort of feel like I felt at the buffet. I don't know where to begin. There's so many different areas to dive into, so many different areas to think about and to consider. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that the mood is rude in our culture today. Have you noticed that? Am I the only one? People are rude, aren't they? Think about the freeways. People tailgating, cutting you off, giving you the one finger wave, telling you where to spend eternity. It's crazy out there. You pull up to an intersection, someone has the stereo cranked up so loud, peels the paint off your car. You've got a sudden urge to go to the restroom. It's that bad. <laughs> Think about our companies. Think about the corporate world. Back in the day, it was the customer is always right. Put the customer first. Now it's like, okay, I'll do enough just to get by and just to collect my paycheck. Now it's like, what's your problem? You call somebody up, want to get some answers? You always get this, this answering machine or all this technology and they'll go, choose several options. Option number one, option number two. I want to go, I want to choose option number none. I don't want any option. I want to talk to somebody with skin on. Those things make me angry. Am I the only one? Ah, I can't negotiate those things very well. The world of sports, the mood is rude there. Are you talking about some rude stuff? Think about the NFL back in 1964. After a great play or something cool happened, it was a team thing. Today, accompanying every great player, every touchdown is trash talking, it's pointing, it's all of this stuff about me. We're so self-absorbed, we're so rude, it's even infiltrated the sports world. I like what Lombardi said. Vince Lombardi said, when you score a touchdown, act like you've been in the end zone before and you're coming back. I really like that. The mood is rude on the family front. Have you ever watched husbands and wives together, maybe at a restaurant or walking down the street? The husband is walking like 10 yards in front of the wife. You know, the husband is talking and the wife is like rolling her eyes. Or the wife is talking and the husband is like, you know, playing on his cell phone. It's crazy. A lack of respect in the family. Parents are rude to kids. Kids are rude to parents. And kids are like, you know, being all rebellious and everything else. The world of technology. I could go on and on. Again, it's like a big buffet. Technology. I love technology, but let's get real. Technology has blurred the lines between adults and kids. Think about that. Because adults talk to kids online like kids, and kids talk to adults online like adults. So respect and honor thrown out the window. One of the number one problems that, that owners of restaurants face are people talking on the cell phones. And even in church, as I scan the audience each and every week, I see people texting and people talking 
on cell phones, doing business in church with the old cell phone. The mood is rude. It really, really is. And when I think about the rationale of rudeness, you know, the excuses that you give and I give, it's pretty interesting. Some of us say, well, it's the pace of life. We're like on this Audubon type pace and we've just, we've just got to be rude. Others blame parents. You know, we're great at blaming our parents. It's, it's my parents' fault. It's their fault. They didn't train me. They didn't, they didn't teach me etiquette and manners and respect. Others say, well, you've got to be rude just to get by. That's just, that's just the deal. Still others say, it's the media's fault. And if you want to talk about rude, think about the media. Not all of the media, but so much of the media is, is pretty much a race to the bottom. How low can you go? Have you ever thought about how, how funny it is to see these entertainers, some of these hip-hop stars talk about, don't disrespect me, yet they're making squillions off disrespect. Disrespecting women, disrespecting authority figures, disrespecting our country. The mood is rude. Why? Are we so rude and angry? That's a really strong question, a deep question. Why? I believe we struggle with rudeness because of a lack of respect and a lack of manners. And I think really the problem is not environmental. It's not informational. It's not parental, it's not even geographical. I think the problem, although those are factors, the problem is a spiritual issue. It's a spiritual issue. You show me a culture that moves away from God, and I'll show you a culture that moves away from honor and respect and manners. So it's a spiritual problem. And really the situation is, is, a, is a deep one, it's a historic one. We can trace the roots of rebellion all the way back to the first tree in the garden that held the forbidden fruit. That's where we begin to struggle with rudeness. But again, the mood is rude. This word rude is an interesting one. The word rude means to disfigure, it means to mar. So when I'm rude to someone on the freeway, or around the office, or in my home, or at an athletic event, I'm disfiguring myself, I'm disfiguring the person I'm being rude toward, and furthermore, I'm disfiguring God. The mood is rude. I read a couple days ago where, where someone said, hey, manners and respect are pretty much common sense. I totally disagree. Common sense is highly uncommon because people who have common sense have the ability to make sense out of the common. That only comes from God himself. So I would say common sense is highly unusual. We have though a power out there that we can by our own volition bring in here to give us the ability to show people in our lives and the world huge amounts of honor and respect and etiquette and manners. So think about it, are you waving the banner of good manners? Are you? I think about Abraham, Father Abraham, back in the book of Genesis, specifically Genesis, I believe, chapter 13, around verse nine and 10. Abraham was a multi-billionaire he was traveling around with his nephew Lot. Yacht, Lot was, was younger than Abraham. Lot like, looked up to Abraham. Lot was also fabulously wealthy and they had all of their stuff together. They were moving here, there, and yonder. And, and it came to a point where Abraham challenged Lot to, 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 to split. He was like, Lot, this thing is crazy, man. We're so big, we got so much money, we need to split. So let me, let me read you this text in Genesis chapter 13, verse nine, because if you wanna talk about etiquette, if you wanna talk about respect, if you wanna talk about honor, check this out. Genesis 13, verse nine. Is not the whole land before you? That's Abraham. Let's part company, he said. You go to the left, I'll go to the right. You go to the right, I'll go to the left. Now, it doesn't seem like much, and many of us have read this before, but 
Our boy Abraham is showing what respect is all about. He's saying, you choose first. Hey, Lot, you choose first. Abraham was showing Lot more respect than he was even showing himself. And that's unnatural, that's supernatural, that's making sense out of the common. So I wanna to say to Abraham, hey Abraham, excuse me, your manners are showing. Say that with me, excuse me, your manners are showing. Turn to your neighbor on your right and your left and say, excuse me, your manners are showing. Isn't that true? Because we're all waving the banner of manners. Some of us have great manners. Some of us hold people in high esteem. We treat others as more important than ourselves. We say in essence, like Abraham did, you choose first. Others of us though are so self-absorbed, it's freaky. Have you ever watched some of the interviews of some of the athletes and some of the entertainers? Check out how many times they say, I, 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 me, 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 I, 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 me, 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 I, 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 me, 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 I, 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 me, me. You're talking about meistic? You're talking about self-absorbed? Here's the math of rudeness. You want to do some math? It's a very simple equation. Ignorance plus arrogance equals rudeness. If I'm ignorant of the grace of God, if I'm ignorant that I serve a God of respect and manners, if I'm ignorant of his forgiveness and what he's done for my life that I don't deserve, if I'm ignorant of the fact that he put my interest above his own, it'll usher in arrogance. It's all about me. Me, 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 I, 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 me, 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 I, I, I. That equals rudeness. I'm disfiguring myself, others, and God. But here's some good math. You ready for some good math? Some easy math, some old school math. Knowledge plus humility equals respect. Knowledge, I have knowledge. I know God. I've, I've received him. I understand about grace and mercy to the best of my ability. I understand that, I have the knowledge of that. I have the knowledge that Christ is in my life, that he challenges me by his Holy Spirit to put others' interests above my own. I have that knowledge. And because of that knowledge, what's the result? I'm hammered by humility. It's just like, Lord, I don't deserve, I don't, I don't deserve the next breath. It's all by your amazing, one of a kind, second mile grace that I'm even taking up space and taking up grace on planet Earth. Knowledge plus humility equals respect. Now, what does respect mean? I've talked about it for a while, respect. Respect means to examine. It means to look again. And one of the things that we must understand is the fact that we've never stared at somebody. We've never locked eyes with someone who does not matter to God. So every single person we see matters to God. We honor them, the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, as we look into the windows of their soul. Are you a man or woman or student of respect or disrespect? Are you waving the banner of good manners or bad manners? Because it's all about the details. It's all about the details. Small tweaks take you to giant peaks. People say, well, the devil's in the details. You ever heard that before? That's a fact, the devil is in the details. You know why? He knows if we concentrate on the details, we'll achieve our destiny. So that's why the little things are often the, 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 the biggest hurdles we've got to jump over. But I'm here to tell you, as we concentrate on the details, as we, as we allow the Holy Spirit of God to rule and reign and to show us what to do in the small things, the small things will accrue and it will take us to a life of destiny. So the details will move us from mediocrity to magnificence. Are you ready? I am. Are, are, are you ready for this study? Because I want to tell you several things about manners right quick in this opening session. Number one, manners aren't surfacy. They're not surfacy. They're soulish. They're deep. They emerge from the core of you and me. I'm not talking about Emily Post, put your napkin in your lap, don't burp at the table, 
walk uh, the, toward, you know, uh, toward the traffic when you're walking down the street with a woman. So, you know, if the car runs over a mud puddle and splashes, it spl splashes the man and all. Yeah, I mean, that's great and fine. I I'm talking about something deeper than that. I'm talking about Philippians 2, 3, and 4. Do nothing out of rivalry or conceit, but in humility consider others as more important than yourselves. Fumble. Everyone should look out not only for his own interests, that's understood. You know, the Bible never tells us to love ourselves. Isn't that interesting? It never says, love you. God just knew we'd do that. But also it says, look out for the interest of others. Wow, manners aren't surfacy, they're soulish. They're a God thing. We move away from God, we move away from respect. We walk with God, we have huge amounts of respect and honor. And again, I've gotta ask you the question, are you showing people respect? Are you a man or woman or student of respect when you walk in the classroom, of respect when you deal with your spouse, of respect when you talk to your parents, of respect when you talk to your boss, of respect when you talk to your friends? Are you a man or woman of respect? Manners emerge from our soul. They're not surfacy. They're from our core. Those of us who follow Christ should have the greatest amount of respect and honor than anyone on the planet. People's heads should snap because we're waving the banner of good manners. I had a meeting about a year ago with, with an actor. And this actor came by my office with several other people and, and you know, we were talking and you know, this, this guy's known as a Christian. You probably know his name, and I will not reveal it. And during the meeting, it was about 30 minutes, you know, we started talking back and forth, back and forth and, and, and man, the dude, like after we've been talking for about 10 minutes, goes, excuse me. Yeah, what's up? No, I'm not gonna do that deal. No. All right, thanks. He goes back to the meeting. Five minutes later, excuse me. Yeah, 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 try that. I wanna be on that reality show, yes. Yes, get me on there. No. All right, all right. The brother took like four or five cell phone calls in the midst of this meeting. He had an opportunity to sit down and focus. He had an opportunity to wave the banner of good manners, to show respect and honor, not only to me, but to the people he was with and the other people in the room. Some were not followers of Christ. And I thought to myself as he walked out, what a horrible example. So we either reflect or deflect the character of God by the way we treat others. And those of us who are followers of Christ, as we treat others the way Jesus treats us and the way Jesus modeled us to treat others, you know, looking at everybody with significance, teaching us how to listen, teaching us how to talk, speaking the truth and love and all that, as we do that, we can take the ball down the field in a greater and more focused way than we ever thought possible because so often, the world would rather see a sermon than hear one any day. How are your manners? They're not surfacy, they're significant. Also notice this, manners aren't general, they're specific. That's why this series is called Details. It's all in the details. People say, the devil is in the details. That's so true. You know why he's in the details? Because he knows if we concentrate on the details, we'll discover our destiny. So it's the little things that give us the biggest problems. I would say the divine is in the details as well. God is a God of the details. And maybe this whole casualization of our culture, as cool as it is, has hurt this thing. And it's even infiltrated those of us who walk with Christ. We kind of have this whatever mentality. We'll be late for an appointment, whatever. Late for church, whatever. Just, just throw something on if it's lying by the bed, whatever. Our language, you know, whatever. We treat people, you know, whatever. Whatever mentality is not biblical. And I'm all for being relaxed and having fun and all of that. But we've got to raise the bar. And one of the problems with technology is the simple reality that has blurred the lines of respect. Have you ever thought about that? 
Technology blurs the lines of respect. You can go online or do whatever text and Twitter and whatever you want to say, email, and you can just write all of these outlandish, stupid things out there and use all this casual stuff and, and read this and that. And, and, and so now kids are talking to adults like kids and adults are talking to kids like adults and it goes back and forth and the lines are blurred and, and there's no honor, there's no respect and it's just, it's a free for all. And I'm all for technology. You know, our, our, our church, we're in to technology. We embrace technology, but, but we have to take a long look and say, man, am I twittering or littering? Am I blogging or bragging? We're gonna ask ourselves those questions because technology is a real reflection of, of where we are in today's culture. We've lost that respect and we're gonna talk about that. I remember when Jesus told the story in Matthew 25 about this, about this master who had these servants and, and he gave one of his servants five talents and the, and the servant parlayed five into 10. Man, this, this dude invested and he, and he doubled his money. His master replied in this story Christ was telling us, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few things. I'll put you in charge of many things. So we focus on the details, friends, and we'll discover our destiny. The deity, the divine is in the details. Number three, manners aren't selective, they're standard. They're for everybody. Well, she's just a waitress. He's just someone who cleans the office. They're just our neighbors. We've never met a justa. There's no such thing as a justa. A justa? You, you, you've never locked eyes with someone who does not matter to God. I've never looked at someone who is not a piece of art, a masterpiece. You ever seen a, seen a great painting, like maybe an original painting from one of the masters, maybe a Picasso or Renoir? You ever seen one of those original? You know, maybe you've seen the Mona Lisa or one of those paintings and you're like, when people see it, you know, in live, they're like, they're like, they're like, oh, 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 wow, oh, woo. You know what that is? That's honor. If you look behind the word honor and the picture of honor and the tone and tenor of honor, it's like, oh, wow. What would happen, husbands? We walk through the door after work and our wives greet us like, oh. man, would that be great. Our kids looked at us, mom, and they go, oh. You look at your pastor, oh. You know, it's, it's great. We should honor one another. We have never, ever, ever talked to someone who does not matter to God. And that's so critical and crucial. Uh, years ago, I, when I was in high school, I was a, really, I was, a, I was a senior in high school. I was going, of course, to, to college. And I, I just signed um, the, the scholarship at Florida State and all that. And I was trying to stay in shape. And I got to know this guy in our church. He was a very interesting personality. He played in the NFL for about 10 years. And, and uh, he had just become fabulously wealthy. And one day um, um, at church, we were talking. He's like, uh, hey, man. Uh, you want to go running with me? And I go, yeah, I, I would love that. I mean, to hang out with this guy, you know, NFL, you know, Mr. He's a cool guy, great Christian guy. And I said, yeah. He goes, well, let's go to my country club. And he named the country club. And it's like, wow. I mean, you, you can't even get into this country club. It is just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. So uh, I was with this dude and we walked into the to the uh, locker room and mahogany and the carpet, you know, and over there you see, you know, the guys playing cards and drinking the scotch and smoking the big old Cubans, you know, I'm like, whoa. And I recognize some of, you know, he's like, yeah, that guy there is worth 700 million. This guy has just sold his company for blah, 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 blah. And he kind of agreed to them, you know, and these were, these were big time guys, heavy hitters, we would call them. But he did something that, that, that really messed me up. I thought he would like bring me over 
to those tables and you introduced me to those guys. I mean, these are, you know, wow, you know? He didn't do that. He takes me over to the people who were shining shoes. And he sits down and has this conversation with them and not the other guys. He's introducing me to the people shining shoes and wiping off golf clubs, and he's treating them with such respect. I'm like, this is freaky. And I'm a high school kid, I go, you know what? That's Jesus, that's Jesus. Not to say that you don't show the love to the people playing cards and sipping scotch and smoking cubits, that's great. But how do you treat people that can do nothing for you? Those guys shining shoes and cleaning golf clubs. My friend's a multi-quazillionaire. What can they do for him? Come on, Sarah, what, what can they do for him? Been in the NFL 10 years, what, what are they gonna do for him? If I'm him, I'm like, wow, I wanna hang out with these guys. I can, maybe they're selling a company, maybe have a chance to invest. In, he didn't, no, 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 no. How do you treat people who can do nothing for you? We've never locked eyes with someone it does not matter to God. So manners aren't selective. They're standard. They should be for everybody. I love Colossians 4, verse 6. I mean, it puts it right in our face. Your speech should always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you should answer each person. I always get scared when people say, well, I'm just a tell it like it is person. You know, I just tell it like it is. When I think it, I say it. I'm like, man, I'm talking to an Igmo. <laughs> if you're ever around someone like that, you gotta be respectful and honor them, but run. Those people are nuts, man. If I said everything I thought, <laughs> whoa. You know what I've noticed about people talking about being rude? If, if you have a rude demeanor, as you age, you will look like rude. On the other hand, if you're a person of honor and respect, you will look respectful. And you'll have this kind of look of honor about you. I'm talking about on your face. And you can have all the cosmetic surgery and stuff you can imagine, you're still gonna reflect it. I'll give you an example. A couple nights ago, I'm at a basketball game, high school basketball game. To my right was Lisa, there was two empty seats. And to my left, I look and see this guy. And this guy had one of the worst expressions on his face. He was in his 70s. He's just like. And I looked over and there was his poor daughter. I mean, there was no doubt it was his daughter and her husband and she had that same thing going on. Rude is contagious. She was like this, he was like that. She was 50 on her way to looking like that, okay? Now, some students were sitting in front of us, well-behaved, mannerly, no disrespect. They were, they were like model students. The gym was packed except for this, you know, next to the last row. And, and, and I'm gonna tell you the reason. There's some seats between myself and this guy. So, the game keeps going on. This one team is behind and finally it gets to the last. And, 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 and th th this young guy, that in fact, that goes to our church, he scored a left-handed shot with point eight seconds left to win the game. They've been behind the whole, it was a great deal. But anyway, these kids just stood up in front of us and clapped. They were maybe up, you know, everybody was up like, I don't know, 15 seconds. Well, when they stand up, this rude guy goes, you kids sit down. If you want to stand up, go across the other side, sit over there. Some of us are trying to watch the game. I found myself sitting down. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> you talking about speaking harshly? Wow. Wow. So, so what a horrible example. Our words are so powerful. Words of honor, words of respect, or words of disrespect, dishonor. Are we looking into the windows of people's souls? Are we looking really at people or through them? 
How about people from different cultures? How about people with different colored skin? How about people who drive different cars and live in different neighborhoods and different places? I mean, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, this is tough. I mean, this is, this is some deep stuff. Here's another one. Manners, I could go on and on, aren't about you. I'll say it again. They're about others. They're really about others. You choose first. That's what it's about. You choose first, Abraham. You choose first. Yeah, yeah, a lot. You choose first. That's what it is. We have this me first mentality, don't we? It's all about me, 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 I, 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 me, 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 I, 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 I. No, 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 no. It's about others. And in the natural, I can't do that, nor can you, but this supernatural thing takes place inside your life and mine, and we begin to become others driven. And it snaps the heads of people who are far away from God, and they're like, wow, that's, that's awesome. So excuse me, your manners are showing. Husbands, excuse me, when you burp at the table, your manners are showing. Hey ladies, excuse me, when you nag your husband again, your manners are showing. Hey kids, you talk back or talk smack to your parents, excuse me, your manners are showing. You at the three pointer in the game, talk trash to your opponent, excuse me, your manners are showing. You text in church, excuse me, your manners are showing. You arrive late to church, excuse me, your manners are showing. You give somebody the one finger wave on the freeway, excuse me, your manners are showing. You walk past people who help and assist you at the office or at school. Maybe I'm talking about the janitorial staff. Maybe I'm talking about the people that work with technology, excuse me, your manners are showing. You go to the coffee shop and grab some coffee and don't look at the person, make eye contact and say, how are you doing? You don't use thank you, please, excuse me, excuse me. Your manners are showing. I could go on, I'm, I'm starting to get excited now, but. Do you wanna really apply this stuff? I do. I mean, as we face this new year, 2010, do you, do you wanna apply this stuff? I do. Do you? I do. In the balcony? What's up, balcony? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to give you 10 things, 10 things, 10 principles right now, and I'm going to fly through these. 10 things that we can do in 2010. Ed, how do we do them? 10 things. I mean, get me two or three. No, no, no. 10. 10. And we can do 10. I'm telling you, it's all about 10. We can do this. No doubt about it. Can we do it on our own? No. God, though, will give us the ability, and I'll tell you how, because it'll sort of explain itself. Are you ready? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Number one, I will take responsibility for respect. I'm gonna take responsibility for it. I mean, it's a spiritual issue, it's a God thing. I'm not gonna blame my sister, my aunt, my father, my boss, my coach, my teacher, whatever. I'm gonna take responsibility for it. But you show me somebody who's rude, they always have that victim mentality, don't they? It's all about the victim. Poor pitiful me. And you become self-absorbed. And I, 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 me, 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 my, my, my. Manners aren't passive, they're active. Number two, oh, I need this one. I will welcome and receive correction gladly. I don't know about you, but I kind of bow up when I receive correction. Do you? I must be the only one. That's fine to bow up. I mean, okay, that's cool. But think about it, pray about it, talk to God about it. Number three, I will deal with people honestly without hostility. Some of you are now going like, are you kidding me? There's gonna be 10 of these? Yeah, just, just, just stay with me, stay with me. <laughs> I'm gonna speak the truth in love. I'm gonna realize the power of the words. Number four, Remember this, I will look at, not through people. Who are those people on the peripheral? Who are those people like Zacchaeus who are hanging from the trees wanting to see who Jesus is? Who are those people in your life and mine? What did Jesus do? He wasn't passive, he was active. He'd go up, hey, hey, Zacchaeus. He said, let's do lunch. Number five, uh-oh, I will look my best 
because I represent the best. I look my best. I'm not saying to freak out over it. I'm not saying to go somewhere and spend a ton of money, but I'm saying we're going to talk about cleanliness, order, and neatness because the scriptures have a ton to say about it. Are you putting your best foot forward? We've got to look the best, right? Because we represent the best. Number six. Well, that's a word to husbands and wives, isn't it? Around the house, what we wear. Ooh. Number six. Wow. You know, women put on that not tonight nightgown, you know? <laughs> Guys wear those 1980s shorty shorts around. Whoa. <laughs> Number six. I'll keep going. I will show respect in all of my relationships. I'll show respect. I'll show respect. Let's, let's make a covenant and a commitment to put the needs of others, to put their interests above our own. What would happen in your family, if you're single, well, amongst your friends, if you're single in your dating relationship, if you did that? Guys, women are begging for that. They're begging for someone to be their knight in shining armor. And we're gonna talk about that during this series too. I'm telling you, 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 girls, you don't even want to date someone who does not show you honor like that or respect, who's not mannerly. You don't, don't even. Don't, don't even waste your time. Number seven, I like this one. I will incorporate the power words into my vocabulary. What are the power words? Well, students, ready for this? Yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Why are you saying sir and ma'am? I'll tell you why. Because you're talking to a gentleman, a lady, you're talking to someone who's older than you. Let's bring back Mr., Mrs., Miss. And, and, and adults don't say, oh, no, no, don't call me Mr. Young. Just call me old Ed. A horse is a horse, of course, of course, you know. Please, thank you, excuse me, power words, man. We're going to talk about some power words in this series. I'm, I'm doing a whole talk on power words. Can't wait. Number eight, I will make hospitality happen. You know, this is something that, that I've heard very few messages on or read very few uh, uh, commentaries about. The Bible commands hospitality. Did you know that? It commands it. And no one ever talks about it because it's uncomfortable. And I'm not talking about entertaining, you know. I mean, that's fine, but, but I'm talking about just being hospitable. I'm going to challenge you to be hospitable during the next several weeks. Okay. Number nine. A little music trivia. I've been doing this. I love this. Number nine. Number nine. You remember the Beatles when they had that I don't know what, which album it was. They said, number nine, number nine. You remember that? Anybody remember that? Any Beatle mania people here? Number nine. Yeah, yeah, some. I mean, you guys are smart. That, that, that's good that you know that. Most people don't. The White Album. Yeah, the White Album. Number nine. Number nine. Who in here likes the Beatles? Okay. I like them okay. I like them okay. I really liked Paul McCartney and Wings. I did. I do, you know. Not every song, but like, this is going to be a little bit goofy. You remember that song Paul did, uh, Silly Love Song? You think the people would have had enough of silly love song? I like that. I also like that song he did called Jet. Boom, 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 boom. That's a great starting. Jet! I don't want to turn in my man card when I say this, but you know, don't, don't judge me about my musical selections. 
but I'll tell you who I like. Not, not all of his songs, but I like a couple of his songs. This is, this, you're, gonna, you're gonna laugh at me, but I'll say it. I'll confess it, we're in church. Barry Manilow. I'm serious, I hate, let me, let me tell you why, let me tell you why. Some of you guys are like, man, I'm leaving. This was Barry Manilow. He has, a, he has a, a unique place in my heart because Lisa, she went to this uh, little high school in Columbia, South Carolina. And in one of the local high schools, invited Barry Manilow to perform at the little high school. And, and they asked him, you know, like, I don't know when, 19, I don't know, 74 or whatever. And he said yes, like, you know, years before. At that time, he wasn't that popular. Well, over the next two years of that, you know, from 75, 76, his career blew up. Guess what? He kept his word and Barry Manilow performed at this little high school. But anyway, the song I like that Barry Manilow did, because most songs these days, they don't have a beginning and an end. Have you noticed that? They just like start. All of a sudden it's like And here's how it ends. It just fades away. That's not music. It just fades away. Now Barry Manilow, he has a song uh, could it be magic? Okay, let me, let me tell you why this song's so brilliant. Because I've listened to it a lot. Okay. Because I, I have ADD and I'll like lock into certain songs. Like I, I've, I've heard some of U2 songs, I bet 10,000 times. I haven't known them backwards, you know. Anyway, Barry Manilow. Could it be magic? This song's brilliant. Here's how it starts. Boom. Boom. It's on the piano. Boom. Bum, 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 and he sings it. Okay, so you think the song's over? You know, could it be magic? Whatever. Okay, and he sings it, and you're thinking, okay, the song's over, but it's, there's a little bit of silence, and all of a sudden he comes back to it. I love it. Bong, 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 bong. I just like that. <laughs> I don't know how we got into that. Number nine, this is a big point too. And I, I mean, I like only a couple of his songs. It's not like, don't, don't send me the best of Barry Manilow or something. No, no, I, I, I really like, like my, my favorite band is U2. They are, but, but I just, there's a couple of, I, I like all different types of music, I do. I mean, I like, I like, um, um, wow, from, uh, Well, I better not get into it. Number nine. You know who's the best rapper? And this, this guy's, I'll tell you, man, in my opinion, the best, this guy, you know, I pray for him regularly, and I'll tell you about that in a second. The best rapper, no doubt, is Eminem. I mean, in my opinion, as far as like, that, that guy cranks out lyrics. And I'm, you know what I'm doing right now? I want to tell you this, this is a little insider information. I've had too much espresso, I promise you. I'm, I'm gonna redo an Eminem song, you, you see what, you wait. And I'm gonna Christianize it and I'm gonna do it on this stage over the next several weeks. I, yeah, I am, I'm, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. And I'll, I'll tell you which song it is too, Lose Yourself, you know. <laughs> Mom's spaghetti, falling spaghetti. <laughs> grab it up, there's no gravity, up the go gravity. I'm, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. Number nine, I will live in prayer mode. I even pray for Eminem. You think I'm crazy? Okay, prayer mode. What's prayer mode? You're talking about discipline, talking about spiritual discipline. This is how we're going to make this stuff happen, man. Prayer mode is, okay, I shake Chris King's hand. Didn't Chris do a phenomenal job last week? If you missed that, pick that tape up. It's called 48 Inches. Chris, stand. Turn, turn around, man. 48 Inches. What's up, Chris? Hi, 40. People ask yeah. me that's like my real height. I'm actually 5'4". Not the 48 inches doesn't refer to me, but that doesn't really matter. Thank you. It was a great talk. But anyway, if I'm, if I'm talking to Chris like that, boom, I'm praying for him. That quick. Boom, boom, boom. That quick. That quick. 
Sydney, how you doing? I talked to Sydney, shake her hand. Hi, Sydney. Sydney's friends with our family, our twins. Pray for her. God bless Sydney today. I don't, I, don't know what, you know, I don't know what she's dealing with. What's up, Jeff? How you doing, brother? I like that coat. Where'd you get that? Uh, Macy's. I love that. Stand up. That coat right there. You're talking about, look at this guy. <laughs> Jeff, how was, how, was the, how was the game, man? What's, what's your record? What's your guys' record? 18-4. Uh, and 18-4. And, and uh, where, do you, where do you play ball? South Lake Carroll. South Lake Carroll. Thank you. So, see, I just, I just, I just play, pray quickly for Jeff. What's up, Brent? How you doing? I pray for Brent. Pray for Hugh. Just to anybody you see. Thumb through a magazine. You know, I love fishing. I, live, I read fishing magazines all the time. Boom, y'all pray for fishermen. I don't even know. Pray for people. Boom, 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 boom. You start praying for people, what will happen? Wow, you'll start putting their interests and needs above your own. You'll see God show up in crazy, insane ways. Just, just live a life of prayer. And I don't do it for every single person. I forget sometimes. But just stay in that mode, prayer mode. Prayer mode, pray for every single person you see. You see your parents, pray for your parents. See your kids, pray for your kids. See this person, God bless this person. You're sipping coffee somewhere, whatever. It, it, it will change your life to live in prayer mode. You won't believe what'll happen, prayer mode, prayer mode. Now that brings us to the last one, and this is my most favorite one. Oh, people are gonna go nuts. People will be standing for this one. You'll be going crazy like you did last night when the Cowboys won their first playoff game in 50 years, yes. I will fast to make it last. That's right, we're starting a fast when? Today. There's no time like now, right? You ready to fast? Now see, that's, uh, I love food. That big old buffet I was talking about, I mean it's, but the Bible says to fast. And we're gonna do the Daniel fast, a modified fast. Daniel ate, you know, vegetables, fruits, water, you know, healthy, um, stuff like that, amino acids, uh, protein shakes, things like that. <laughs> Ezra, chapter 8, 23. So we fasted and petitioned our God about this and he answered our prayer. As you exit, if you don't have a computer, just, just pick up a hard copy at our, our kiosk. This is about how to fast. Go online, fellowshipchurch.com, how to fast. I want you to follow Lisa and I on Twitter because we're gonna go through each of these 10 things I talked about. We're gonna give you from recipes to what we're dealing with, what we're struggling with, you know, I want a big, fat, juicy steak or whatever, and it, it, it'll, be, it'll be cool. We're gonna, we're gonna have some fun with this. However, you can lose pounds, that's cool. You look better, feel better, awesome. But the deal is, it's a spiritual issue. So we're gonna take the 10 things and think about these things and meditate on these things and pray for these things while we're fasting. All right, here's a fasting contract. And you don't have to fast. It's between you and God. During the fast, I will specifically pray for what? Because I gotta go do this, I don't know. Anytime I see those lines, I think about that. No one knows what they mean, except you. I will fast beginning today, right? And think about the power. I mean, all of us, thousands and thousands of people, all of our campuses, fasting, praying. There's no telling what God's going to do. It, this, is, this is awesome. What a way to start 2010. 48 inches and then a fast, Chris. Who will fast with me? I don't know. Now, what can I eat? Well, I'm glad you asked. Whole grains, you know, brown rice, oats, barley, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you know, beans, uh, split peas, lentils, black-eyed peas, fruits, apples, apricots, my favorite, mango, uh, pineapples, pears, blueberries. I love those too. Grapes, grapefruit, fig. I like figs. Figs are awesome. Man, try a fig. It's a very biblical fruit. Vegetables, all sorts of vegetables. Fresh asparagus, artichokes, beets. Mmm, they're good. Broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, oh, oh, parsley. Somebody call somebody. Potatoes, radishes, lettuce, leeks, kale, mustard greens. Oh, yeah. 
collard greens, oh yes, seeds, nuts, and sprouts. Now liquids, okay, water. Who would have ever thought back in the day water would cost money? We should have invested in water 30 years ago. Water, hey, here's some water, $5 for a bottle of water. Who would have thought you could sell water? Or for that matter, coffee. You ever thought about that? You ever go to five bucks, I mean Starbucks? Coffee. <laughs> Water, unsweetened soy milk, tea, honey, natural fruit juice. And also too, let me add one, bean juice. That's coffee, bean juice. <laughs> coffee is legal. <laughs> I'm making a pastoral decision. Bean juice. Last time I fasted, I cut out coffee. Lisa said, honey, you need to go to the mental institution. We have got to have coffee. We've got to. Bean juice. Now, you can't put any pollutants in it. No cream or sugar. But there are, you know, certain, uh, you can put honey in it or almond milk or something like that. But yeah, drink your coffee. In fact, when you drink coffee, I've read the studies. You, you score better on IQ tests. Before you take the ACT or SAT students, drink some coffee. Man, before I played basketball games back in the day, I'd drink some coffee, man, you could not shake me. <laughs> it's awesome, I guarantee you Daniel drank it, it just didn't say it in the Bible. But I bet he did, bean juice. God, I love coffee, isn't it a, it's a great drink. Wow, thank the Lord for coffee. People ask me, Ed, how have you survived the ministry for 20 years? Coffee. <laughs> that's a little joke. Okay, th but that's it. That's all we need to do, and, and it's going to be awesome. So visit fellowshipchurch.com. It says here for recipes and daily encouragement. Please, uh, man, I want to I connect with you guys and, well, on, the, on the Twitter. That's a fun way to do that. We, we already have some uh, funny things up there that we're going to we're going to put on there today in the next several, several weeks. So anyway, this is going to be a fun series. We're doing these 10 things. Wow, I've talked for a long time, but we've had fun, haven't we? Church should be fun. It should be fun. It should be fun.